Today we look at some foundation cards that could be impactful and standard in the new meta games. Waffles in the morning, syrups heating slow. Golden stacks are rising, sunrise in the glow. Sticky choice so grand, breakfast on demand. Smile and take my hand in Waffle Wonderland. What's up, everyone? Welcome back. Uh, so today I'm going to be doing um, what I think will be some of the most impactful cards in standard. Um, I did choose one of each color uh, from either the common and uncommon slot, but also from the rare and mythic slots. So uh, uh, I have five different cards from each side of things, kind of like we'll talk a little bit about limited in, in some of these cards, but we'll also talk about the standard metagame. So uh, let's just jump right into it, right? I don't want to waste your guys' time. Let's just see what they are, right? So the first card I have here is Bolt Bend, Okay. I was going to choose Bolt Wave, but then I was like, you know what? I don't think it's as good as, as this card, per se. Bolt Wave is one of those things where it's like, ah, eh, you can hit everybody for three, and it's like, it's a it's a subpar lightning bolt, right? This one, on the other hand, is three and a red, but this spell costs three generic less to cast if you control a creature with power four or greater. Change the target of target spell or ability with a single target. I think this is going to be a very good sideboard card. I don't know if you'll see a lot of it main board. But I feel like this can be a very powerful card depending on what type of spells are being used. Especially, let's say you've got an Archfiend of the Dross out or you've got some other big creature that has a power four or greater and they try to kill it with like a go for the throw. You can bolt bend it for one red right back at their creatures. And yeah, it seems pretty, pretty powerful. Um, like red needed more, right? So <laughs> that's my take for commons and uncommons with red, okay? So I think that's number five. So number four. I picked Arcane Epiphany. Now this card, I think if it was an instant, I probably wouldn't have picked it. But because it's an instant for three and double blue, this spell costs one less to cast if you control a wizard. It's not hard to control a Harry Potter, okay? Um, draw three cards at instant speed. If you have a wizard in play and you cast this at the end of their turn for two and two blue, or even if you just have um, what's his name? Hadi Dejin out. It costs three and two blue to draw three cards at instant speed. I think that's very powerful for being uncommon. And is, this is definitely really, really good in limited. Um, if you're playing in blue, there's a lot of wizards in blue for limited. So I think this is a very strong uh, common uncommon for not just the limited aspect, but also, you know, in a control shell. Um, playing like two copies of this would be phenomenal. So I think this is a really good blue card that's going to make an impact. Next, we're going to get to, uh, I would say, number three, as in like this is my top five picks. Um, and so Divine Resilience for white. It's one white to make target creature you control gains indestructible and until, until end of turn. If this spell was kicked, instead, any number of targets you control gain indestructible and into turn. So these like modular uh, slash like utility spells where it can be a one, like target one or target all are really powerful. And so if you're playing super aggressive strategy and you're late into the game and they try to like day of judgment or something, you can kick this thing off for two and two white and all your guys are protected. Um, I think it's a really, really good spell. Um, I think a lot of uh, white X, white aggro decks are going to run probably two of these in the main and maybe a couple more on the sideboard. Um, and for limited, I've seen this card do really well. So um, I feel like this is a really good card, um, especially if you're in some kind of white aggro shell, white red, white black, white green, you know, White blue, I don't think so much. I think white blue is more for the control uh, with this type of card pool that came out from Foundations. But hey, you know, if you can make a white blue aggro deck, go for it. But this is a very, very strong card. So we're going to get into green, which is number two. Now, here's the thing. Green and black for the uncommon commons, they could be interchangeable. Both of these cards are superstars. They've been in the formats before. They're really good. But let's look at green right now. Imperious Perfect. For two and a uh, two and a green, I almost said two and a white. For two and a green, it's an elf warrior that it's it lords all your elves, gives all your elves plus one plus one. You can pay one green and tap it to, in a sense, make a two two green elf. So this card is super powerful. It's always been really good whenever it's in standard, and it's solid 
for limited. So uh, if you're if you end up opening this and your rare is crap, this is actually rare and limited. Um, so you take this thing and you build green elves, um, green X elves, green black is I think what they have it set up for in foundations, but very solid car, very strong. I wouldn't be surprised if we see some kind of elf ball come back to standard. They did produce a lot of elves in foundation. And so I think this can make a huge impact, not just in limited, but also in standard. All right. So the last card black, uh, this is the number one pick out of all of them. Vampire Nighthawk. It's a classic. It is so good. Flying Death Touch Lifelink is a 2-3 for one and double black. I mean, you can't get any better than this. I mean, you can. But, but what I'm saying, for this cost, for this mana cost and what you get for it, super solid card. I mean, it did see standard play and constructed um, because it was just that good as an uncommon. So I still, I still think it's king as far as the uncommons go. I, I scoured over a lot of uncommons and commons in this set. And I just could not find something better than this, um, in my personal opinion. So, very good card, very strong. And so, uh, that's the top five for commons and uncommons. Now let's jump into the rares and mythics that I think are going to make a huge impact in standard. Now, we're not going to talk about limited with these because most rares and mythics are fairly good in uh, limited. And I say most because there are some you're going to look at and you're just going to be like yeah that is not a limited card um and then other ones you're going to be like yeah that's absolutely insane so the first one that i found was number five which in my opinion is like the weakest out of the five cards that uh, you're going to look at but it's still a, a good card don't get me wrong crystal barricade one in a white artifact creature wall defender you have hexproof and Prevent all non-combat damage that would be dealt to other creatures you control. So if you put two of these out, all of your creatures cannot be targeted or can't be killed by non-combat damage. Yes, they can be sacrificed. Yes, they can be destroyed by lethal destroy effects and things like that. But you uh, you do a slag storm, you do a pyroclasm, nothing happens to these guys, which I think is pretty good against like some of the aggro matchups right like especially red which has a lot of non-combat damage like lightning strike burst lightning things like that i think the biggest thing of this is having hex proof is really good it gives you the player hex proof so if you're playing this this is more likely going to be in a control shell um because you're wanting to limit how much damage you're taking on the ground you're trying to limit how much your opponent duresses you, um, things like that. So um, I think this card could be really, really well in a control shell. Um, you definitely don't want this in aggro. Mid-range, maybe. I don't know what type of mid-range deck would like this. Maybe just like if you're playing mid-range and you have white, maybe in the sideboard for certain matchups. I don't know. But I feel like this, this card for white is pretty strong. So moving into number four which is blue sphinx of the forgotten lore two and double blue has flash so you can play it at any time you can play an instant and it has flying whenever this creature attacks target instant or sorcery card in your graveyard gains flashback until end of turn the flashback flashback cost is equal to that card's mana cost so this is a more expensive um like tier two snapcaster mage right you can flash it in to block, get a surprise block in. It has flying, so it's pretty good evasion. And whenever it attacks, you're gonna target an instant sorcery card in your graveyard to gain flashback, which is really powerful because let's say you've got, you're playing blue-black control and you've got a gopher throw in the graveyard. You can attack, flashback the, um, the go for the throat to kill like their archfiend of the draws maybe their only flyer that can block this thing and now the path is clear for this guy to survive and keep doing things turn after turn um i think this card is going to be really good in like a blue white blue black shell for control um and it's very very powerful to be able to flash back spells especially since there aren't a ton of spells that have flashback in foundations or even some of these other sets that we've had in the past couple years so i believe that this this card will definitely make an impact in some kind of control shell all right so number three um this card really um i i like it a lot and i'm actually play testing with it in a certain deck 
Um, but I'm not sold on it yet, but it, it feels like it can be very powerful. It's called Rite of the Dragon Caller. It costs four and double red. It's an enchantment. Now, whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, create a 5-5 five, five red dragon creature token with flying. So, I think they did a good job with costing this as high as they did. Because if you play this and you get to untap, there are so many spells in standard right now that you could turn around and make 6-5-5 five, five dragons the very next turn. You could be like, opt, opt, burst lightning, um, play some other spells like a into the flood maw and all of a sudden you're just your opponent's staring down a, a ton of dragons and so and they all have flying so it's really hard for your opponent to get through with anything um so and and the fact that you make five five red dragons like this, this card could be nuts um so like i said i've been playing around with it and i'm still working with it to see if it's really as good as i think it is and i still think it is good um but the thing is is it, it's just I feel like this is one of the more powerful red cards for like a combo slash uh, maybe control style build. Um, definitely don't want it in mid range, um, and you don't want it in aggro. It's too high costed for aggro. But if you're in like a control or a combo shell, I think this could work really well. Um, and what I mean by combo shell is you can play like a bitter reunion out. And then next turn, untap, make a make four of these dragons, give them all haste, and just kill them for 20 in one turn. Um, so it, it can combo into like a one-turn one swing kill with it. So if you're able to give the dragons haste right away, and then they have no way, you know, like, you know, there's conditions. But the point is, is you can, you have that aggressiveness to just be like, oh, my opponent's at 20, and now they're dead. So I feel like this can be a very, very powerful card. Uh, so going into the last two here, which, I mean, it looks like green and black are going to be the strongest colors out of this set. Um, but for number two is Zul Azur Lich, Lich Lord. Uh, zombies have always been a great archetype in um, standard, limited, all of that. And this costs one and a black for 2-2. Two, two, with Ward pay two life. So that's pretty powerful that this thing, it can survive or, you know, it makes your opponent really want to have to kill this thing. Um, but you can tap it to cast target zombie creature card from your graveyard this turn. I think this card is very powerful. Um, and with some of the cards that have been reprinted and some of the cards that are in foundations and other sets with zombies... This card's going to be pretty powerful. I think it's going to do really well. The only thing that I don't like is that it doesn't give like plus one, plus one to other zombies. But we do have some other cards that do that. So I guess, you know, with like, if you play Death Baron with this, now this is a 3-3 three, three, and it's a lot harder to kill and things like that. So I don't know. I, I, I like this card a lot. I think zombie uh, tribal can be a thing in standard. Um, like we need more mono black decks running around, but... I think blue-black zombies can be a thing again. But thing is, is I think this is one of the more powerful black cards that were printed in this set. All right, last but not least, a lot of you will see this card and go, yeah, absolutely correct. Um, this card was a menace when it was in standard. Um, Genesis Wave, X in triple green. This card did a lot of stuff in standard. It had some combo decks with it. it, it it's a very powerful card. Uh, reveal the top X cards of your library. You may put any number of permanent cards with mana cost, mana value X or less from among them onto the battlefield. Then put all cards revealed this way that weren't put onto the battlefield into your graveyard. I mean, this, this card is, it's a really good card uh, for green. And if you get into the ramp strategies, and you just vomit a bunch of stuff onto the field by Genesis waving, things can get ugly quick. Um, but it is a very good card, and I think it's honestly one of the better cards that was printed in Foundation for the standard format. Um, I don't think it will be as powerful as it was when it first was introduced into standard because of the, the power creep and everything that has come into standard. But I do believe that this card will be built around. I do believe there will be decks made with this card in mind. And it's going to be one of the top tier decks. Um, but that's what I got for you guys there. Um, yeah, Genesis Wave. Strong card. So that's what I got for you guys today. Thank you for stopping by watching what I think might be 
some of the best, most influential cards in Standard to come from Foundations. What are your guys' opinions? What do you think? Did I miss a card? Do you think there's a card, there's a card out there that's more more um, apt to beat all of these? Like, what do you think? I'd love to hear you guys' comments down below. Let's have a discussion. I love talking about, you know, what I think might be a good card, what might be a bad card. Um, but with that, I'm going to leave you guys like I always leave you. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. And as always, stay syrupy, my friends. Waffles in the morning, syrup's eating slow. Golden stacks around.